All right, welcome back to this series on tutorials and how to play the game. Today we're going to do something that has been requested many, many times. We are going to talk about ship designs. Ship designs can be found in this menu, the more menu, all the way at the bottom. You can also hit F10. You'll find yourself in the ship design menu. As of 1.6.1, there is a really annoying um inside of this particular field, and it is kind of annoying. But however, uh, we're going to go and uh, play around with this, regardless whether or not the audio of the game is annoying us a little bit. Anyway, let's talk about ship design, shall we? As you start off the game, you only have access to Corvettes. The standard design, you'll only have access to this particular version. Now, as you may have seen, if you look over here, is that there are sections. Every ship consists of a section. As soon as you develop torpedoes, you will get access to the torpedo boat, which is this particular design. The thing with Corvettes is they are, together with the cruiser, the only type of ship that can fit the torpedo uh, type of weapon. This makes them excellent for taking out large ships. Why? Because torpedoes are high, high damage hitter, as you can see here, with extremely uh, slow fire rates, but they do a massive amount of damage. If you actually look at the more interesting ones, like the space torpedoes, they completely ignore shields and all, which makes them incredibly powerful. However, as you start at the game, you will only have access to uh, this particular type of ship, which is the Interceptor. We can actually slap on the most basic of modules as well and uh, take it from there. Now, first of all, with this interface, the most important button here is this one, which is the filter by slot size button. If we click on something and you'll see that all of a sudden, well, we can select quite a lot of stuff and, uh, well, not everything will fit in this because as you can see, this is a small slot. Small slots will only fit for a very particular type of weapons. Um, normally, if you do not click the filter by slot size, you will be able to select everything and, of course, not everything's going to fit into this. So you find yourself within the game and your first ship design should probably look a little bit like this. Uh, it is incredibly basic. Uh, it is the quote-unquote naked Corvette. We did a video about this the other day about how incredibly powerful it is due to scaling issues within the game and uh, is something that cannot be overlooked. But of course you want to play around with something else. So let's take a look here at what is a good way of building a ship. Now, as we go through the tech tree, let's say we are at UV lasers type 3. We can see already that once we fill up all the high slots with type 3 lasers, that we are running into a problem, which is power. Power is something that we need in order to f fuel the ship. So... Around this time, you will have yourself something a little bit more powerful in terms of reactors, so we can actually fill up a, a, bit, uh, a bigger reactor. Or we can even slap some, let's say, some, uh, some tier 2 armor on top of it. The thing about armor is it does not have any upkeep cost in terms of energy, so, which means that you can slap on as much armor as you want, which is pretty great. However, certain weapons, for instance, the plasma weapons, are specifically designed to destroy armor, which means that if you're up versus an empire that uses a lot of plasma weapons, that purely going by armor is not the greatest of of ideas. The same thing goes for some of the other types. So let's say we are up for references a empire that uses mostly plasma. This means that we want to use shields. So we put a lot of shields in the low slots. What do we see? Well, we see that we do not have enough power. So what do we do here? Well, let's upgrade some of our fusion reactors to something a little bit better. And as you can see, we are now at plus five power. We've got a little bit of additional power in our reactor before we can go out into space. Now, the real question is, is this power wasted? Should you min-max all of this stuff? Well, if we look at our combat damage, which is illustrated right here, um, right now there's a little indicator that says excess power plus zero percent. Normally, if you have a large amount of additional power, let's put a couple of... Uh, 
cold fusion reactors in here, you'll see that we will get a plus two modifier here due to the amount of excess power that we have. However, if we do not have enough excess power, in this case plus five, it means that that plus five is effectively wasted. So let's upgrade that with, say, an ion thruster. We now have a perfectly balanced ship that is pretty damn decent. However, there is a problem with this. And that is the next tier of ship. Welcome to the Destroyer. Destroyer introduces the first more complicated versions of the ship. And basically, unlike the torpedo boat or the um, interceptor, allows for a lot more modifications. Now, all these uh, types of well, ship sections all have their own visual layout, and every single species have different styles. For instance, the gunship bow is different from the picket ship, and of course, the artillery bow is different from the gun bow. Now, I want to point out that in some of the older versions, uh, some of the super heavy weapons, specifically the Tachyon Lance, was not a Type X weapon, but we'll get into that shortly. Uh, what a Type X actually is, um, it used to be a large, which means meant that you could have destroyers with tachyon lances. I wish I was kidding, it was amazing, and uh, you could basically rush tachyon weapons very early on and have a effectively in in undefeatable fleet. It was it was fixed pretty quickly. I think in 1.4, uh, the pocket battleship went the way of the Dodo. Anyway, uh, let's go and take a look here at the gunship bow, as well as some of these other formats, and particularly the picket ship stern. The picket ship stern uh, introduces a new thing in your game, which is uh, this particular module here. That is the point defense. Point defense is specifically designed to counter missiles. Missiles themselves cannot be countered by any other ship type that does not have point defense on it. They will gladly keep on going and hit their target for massive damage, which means that we can add two point defense cannons on top of it. A point defense uh, cannon basically means that uh, it allows for screening against missiles and it will actively continue to take down uh, any sort of missile-based weapons. It's particularly well used against uh, aliens like the Prothorians, who use a lot of missile-based weapons, as well as certain types of fallen empires, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, if we go to uh, the large slots here, we click, we click on here, there is another variant of the point defense. If I can find it on our list, if we have access to it, it could be that it's a medium... I would actually not be entirely surprised if that is the case. And that is the Flak Battery. So the Flak Battery, it looks like a World War II 88 cannon. A Flak Battery is specifically designed in order to take out things like strike craft and also missiles. It's a more advanced version of the point defense. It's very useful uh, in late game uh, engagements where a lot of ships will start using um, the strike craft, but we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Once we have moved on from here, we get to the cruiser design. As you can see, we will now have three types of uh, modules that we can add, and every single one of them allows for a uh, very, well, a little bit more of a prettier solution. The thing with the cruiser is, is that right now in the game, it's pretty much a de facto standard for any type of ship. And that is the standard for... Um, six medium high slots uh, filled with whatever weapons you like to use at that moment. Personally, I like to go for plasmas due to their uh, combination of range as well as the um, damage that they do to armor, which is a massive 80% ignoring of armor, and armor later on in the game becomes uh, incredibly difficult to crack. Uh, shields, it only does minus 20 damage to it, but shields do not regenerate nearly as quickly as armor, and it's all about doing damage to hull. Anyway, uh, as you can see, uh, it looks pretty cool. However, this is, of course, being upstaged by the mother of all ships, the battleship. And the battleship, of course, is this little bad boy. Uh, of course, the uh, design changes per species. As you can see, uh, we only have three modules. It also introduces uh, this particular thing, which is the hangers. Hangers are basically types of 
uh, mini ships, fighters, if you will, uh, that allow you to use Tricraft. These can be bombers or they can be fighters. They will fight at range. They will use a. Uh, they will do a lot of damage. Specifically, bombers. They will do a pretty large amount of damage versus capital ships, etc. Very useful at taking out corvettes, and I'm currently experimenting to see whether or not uh, hangar bays are the ultimate counter versus naked corvettes. And uh, in addition, the battleship also includes a special type of sh uh, weapon, which is, comes with the Spinal Mount Bow. The Spinal Mount Bow is a very specific module that only has one type of weapon on it, which is the XL weapon. The Spinal Mount will basically be able to fit any of these six bad boys. Uh, they go in three different categories, and each of them has a improved version. Uh, back in the older versions of the game, the Tachyon Lance was king, and the Archimeter was definitely in there as well, and the Mega Cannon was, I believe, introduced in 1.4. Now, they all have their own little thing, but they have a real difficulty firing at anything smaller than cruisers. And uh, any of these cannons are basically able to... Uh, one shot, or at least, yeah, they should be able to one shot cruisers with some difficulty, but they can definitely do it. Uh, the Mega Cannon in this particular case does damage uh, to shields, ignores 50% of armor. The Archimeter, which you can only get from Void Clouds, I believe, uh, which does ignores 100% of armor and ignores 100% of shields, and therefore it immediately attacks the hull. On paper, this is by far the best weapon in the game. It has some drawbacks, though. Uh, its total damage is relatively low, so if you have a lot of ships with relatively high hull, uh, it's going to have some difficulty cracking it, and of course, uh, it has some problems with cooldown. I believe it is, uh, it's a second to slowest cooldown in the game. The Tachyon lands, the king of battle is a little bit slower, but it does a gargantuan amount of damage, up to a hundred more. Giga cannons in general are preferred, as they do... Uh, yeah, they do ignore 50% of armor, and they do 33% of shield damage. Like I said, Tachyons, they ignore 90% of armor, and uh, they they do less damage to shields than any of the other ones. However, in combination with something along the lines of torpedo boats, battleships with Tachyon lances are incredibly good. Especially in large numbers, they will be able to do something which is called Alpha Striking an Enemy, basically knocking them out of the fight with one volley of all ships combined. And this is something that uh, uh, is very, very... Um very much used in games like uh, EVE Online, where in the larger ship battles uh, you have uh, small fleets of up to 200 battleships or cruisers that are basically sitting at range and alpha striking as many targets as they possibly can. And in that game, of course, there are such things as spies in your fleet and they will point out who the shot callers are and taking them off the field, etc, etc, etc. It becomes a logistical nightmare. Anyway, let's uh, say you are at the start of the game. You have taken Corvettes, and you have only got access to Interceptors. So what is a good option here? What is a good starting type of weapon? Well, first of all, we're going to need to reset this to all of our base slots, and basically take a look at our options. Now, the thing with this base start of the game is that missiles can consider to be king. The problem with missiles at the start of the game is there is literally no defense against it until you get to destroyers. Now, obviously, kinetic weapons as well as laser weapons cannot be stopped either, but their general damage is relatively... Uh, I should be a little bit lower than some of the other ones. Let's quickly grab a mass driver here as well as a tier 1 red laser. Uh, so the fusion missiles uh, with cooldown uh, is the slowest in the game, but the amount of damage is pretty damn high. Uh, funnily enough, it's only one tick lower than the uh, the mass driver, and it does more shield damage. Funnily enough, the mass driver is effectively more powerful. Uh, it does 33% damage, and uh, even though their cooldown is significantly lower, it still does 
uh, only 0 0.01 less damage than the missile. That makes the mass driver effectively one of the strongest starting weapons in the game. Obviously, this doesn't scale to later on in the game because as soon as the energy weapons start kicking, like the plasma cannons and some of the more specialized ones like the disruptors who do massive amounts of shields, or if you've managed to take in the unbidden and you want to... Uh, re-engineer their weapons, the small matter disintegrators. Uh, they are incredibly powerful, to say the least. They do twice as much damage as the base weapons of some of the other things, and they ignore 50% of armor, and they have 50% shield penetration as well. Uh, then there is the mining lasers. Mining lasers are cool, because they ignore 100% of armor. Uh, aside from that, they are pretty trash. Then there is the energy siphon which is the exact opposite of the drone mining laser, uh, which does 100 damage to shields. So, let's say you want to build a ship, and you're just like, eh, not feeling it right now. You can just hit autocomplete, boom, there you go, and the, the game will automatically fill in the optimal uh, type of ship design uh, based on the amount of damage that you can do. So basically, it will go through all the combinations of items that are available, will fill them up and basically say, this is the most powerful ship you can create right now. Do not be blinded by this. Uh, it's generally better to manually build a ship yourself. In this particular case, uh, the Matter Disruptor, while powerful, only has a range of 40, which is kind of small. If we, for instance, well, that's, uh, that's a Gauss Cannon on there. That's pretty decent. If we put a Marauder Missile on there, for instance, all of a sudden it's got a range of 70, which is a lot more useful for Corvettes. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if we do, for instance, a Phase Disruptor, what's the data range here? It's 40. It's pretty much the same. Plasma Cannon is 40 as well, and the Advanced Lasers is even less. But yeah, you kind of want to keep this in mind in terms of range. Where should your ship be effective and what kind of role should it have? In this particular case, Corvettes are basically frontline yeah, meat bags. As you can see in the bottom, I have a bunch of uh, technology that uh, from the Enigmatic Fortress. You won't only be having access to that. If you have Leviathans, please go and get it. It's totally worth it. But yeah, uh, a basic primer on how to design your ships. Range is king. Energy is king as well. And, uh, well... Finally, we get to the attributes. Attributes are basically the type of jump drive that you have, or FTL, uh, the various type of hyperdrives in this particular case, or the jump drive, uh, which is uh, kind of expensive, but uh, it uh, uses a decent amount of power and has a lot more range. Uh, of course, if you have one of these, the chance of the unbidden spawning becomes a lot higher. Then we've got the sentient combat computer, as well as the other various combat computers, which increases the chance to evade, as well as combat speed. Combat speed basically means that it can get closer to the enemy a lot quicker, basically getting in range and uh, evade it kind of goes without saying the faster you can evade the better uh, as other weapons will have more difficulty hitting you uh, then there's also chance to hit uh, which basically means that you have a better chance to hitting the enemy then there is the thrusters which increases sublight speed that's basically the speed of your fleet moving around in space it also increases uh, things like evasion uh, combat speed, so once again, so you can close in on your targets. Then there is tachyon sensors, or any other type of sensors for that matter, which generally increase tracking and also increases sensor range. Now, sensor range is a little bit of a difficult one. Let me see if I quickly can find my combat fleet. As you can see, the range of this here fleet is actually quite decent. The problem I have at the moment that I do have space NSA up here as well, but basically the range of scanners basically means what you can see in the vicinity of that fleet. The stronger your scanners, the more range you can see. So in this particular case, I would be able to see these systems if, of course, space NSA was not a thing. I think I do have it sitting around somewhere, but uh, we'll get to that at some other point. Or is it here? Yeah, there it is, the Sentry Array. So, yeah, that's uh, a topic for another day. Finally, uh, there is the um, special things that you can put in your low slots. Uh, these are things like regenerative hull tissue, 
Afterburners and shield capacitors. Afterburners are great for any ships that need to come close towards your target really quickly. So anything that has matter disintegrators, that is kind of you need. Regenerative hull tissue, uh, which you can get from, I believe, the amoeba. I'm not entirely sure if that is the case. So, um, yeah, uh, that's something you want to keep your eye on. And then there is the shield capacitor, which basically improves your shield regeneration. So if you have a fleet that is very much focused on shields, you definitely want to get sh uh, f shield capacitors in your fleet. Now there's a couple of special ones like the crystalline infused plating or the crystalline line plating, which are also really, really good. And sometimes you want to go for those, but those are relatively specific as uh, they either increase your armor, which is very good versus any sort of empire that uses, I believe it's kinetic weapons. I hope this primer on how to build ships was interesting and that you learned something today. Um, again, weapons. They are great. Always read the tooltips. Try to figure out what the enemy has. Counter them with your own fleet designs. Plasma cannons, pretty much the default standard. It is difficult to counter, it has decent range, and, well, it is uh, pretty strong overall, in my opinion. Of course, naked corvettes still uh, trump everything, so uh, keep your mind on that. But unless you want to get uh, repetitive stress syndrome, I highly don't recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative, and uh, if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. The like button is over there, of course, the dislike button as well. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and of course, eat shutter. <laughs>